Welcome to the Deking Training Camp. Here we're going to show you several dekes you can use to perform during games. With NHL Skill Stick or Hybrid Controls, the right stick gives you a full one-to-one -one control of your player's stick. Through different motions on both the left and right stick, you can manipulate how you move your body and where you send the puck. You can use manual control or basic stick handling to weave your way through defenders, ultimately deke out the goalie. Once you start to get the hang of it, you'll be able to harness dozens of advanced moves such as loose puck dekes, stringing dekes together, all the way to the most advanced highlight reel moves. To perform basic stick handling, move the right stick side to side. Do this as you approach the goalie to get him out of position. Makes it easier to score. Let's try it.
When you're skating and stick handling towards defenders, they're going to be using an active stick to try and knock the puck loose. Use a toe drag to move the puck back and around as you pull it over. This extra separation will allow you to avoid an active stick and poke checks as you change lanes to avoid the defender. To perform a toe drag, you move the right stick out to the forehand side and roll it under to the backhand side. You can do a similar move from the backhand side as well. Let's try it. Knowing loose puck dekes will allow you to perform moves that you can use when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation against a defender. The left bumper will open up a whole new world for you. By simply tapping the left bumper, you can send the puck in the current direction of your left stick. By timing this right, you'll be able to push the puck past the defender and then leave him in the dust. Try some taps of the left bumper to get past the defender. Now that you've seen the power of the left bumper, you can combine it with the right stick and that'll allow you to perform even more complex dekes. To perform a windmill, hold the left bumper, then flick the right stick to the left or right to change lanes and collect the puck on the other side. This is awesome, let's try it now. In basic deking training, you learn the fundamentals of both stick handling and loose puck dekes, including the basic windmill. That's just scratching the surface. We're going to get to a collection of loose puck dekes, which you can perform with different starting and end locations on both your left and right sticks. Let's try this concept out and take a crack at the between the legs deke. To perform a between the legs deke, first roll the puck back and hold it on the forehand side. Then press and hold the left bumper to initiate the start of a loose puck deke. From there, you pull the right stick through to the direction you want to send the puck.
On top of the collection of loose puck deeks, there's also some specialized actions you can do to make highlight-worthy deeks. The first thing we'd like to teach you is how to get the puck between your legs. From there, you can shoot, pass, or pull the puck back at any time to leave the defense wondering what's happened. For this tutorial, let's try the between the legs shot. To put the puck between your legs, press and hold the left bumper and press and hold the right stick in. From there, press the right stick forward to shoot. Another position you can get into is the backhand toe drag. To get into this position, first fake a shot by pressing the right stick in. Then while you're in the shot fake, pull back and hold on to the right stick. And then to shoot, you press the right stick forward. Or if he's able to stay with you, you can flip the puck back against his momentum using the right bumper. For now, let's just practice doing the shot. One of the easiest ways to deke out the goalie is to play with his momentum. The one-handed tuck is performed by selling a deke to either the forehand or backhand side, then releasing the puck with one hand against your momentum. To try this, hold the right stick to either the forehand or backhand side, then hold the left bumper and quickly tap the right bumper to release the puck. On top of the timing, your position to the net when you trigger the move is critical in its success. We mentioned throughout the loose puck deke system that you have full control over your body and where you send the puck. To try this out, let's go to the forehand tap deke. First, roll back on your forehand side. Then hold the left bumper to prepare for the deke. From there, pull the puck through with your right stick while at the same time moving your body with the left stick in the opposite direction. This will create separation between you and the puck. To tap the puck back to yourself, flick the right stick back in the direction you skated to. Good luck with this one.
An offside is called when an attacking player enters the offensive zone before the puck gets there. The puck must cross the blue line before the attacking player does. The rule allows the defending team to have the opportunity to defend their zone without giving the attacking players the opportunity to get behind them before the puck crosses the blue line. Do not cross the offensive blue line until the puck fully crosses first. In hockey, a great pass can get you out of a sticky situation and set you up for a great scoring chance. There are really two key passes which players learn that can help them in a variety of situations. The first pass players learn to make is the forehand or backhand sweep pass. It's one of the most commonly used passes in hockey because it's accurate, can be used anywhere. It's generally used when passing to a teammate with no obstacles between the two players. A saucer pass is a variation of the regular pass except you lift the puck slightly as it travels through the air. You sacrifice some control and accuracy, but since it's in the air, it's harder to intercept for your opponent. The saucer pass generally used to elevate the puck over an opponent's stick or get the puck through traffic. To score goals in hockey, you have to know what shot to take. When you're in the offensive zone, you have an opportunity to choose that type of shot. The two main shots players learn are the wrist shot and the slap shot. You want to choose your shot based on the trade-offs of power versus accuracy. You also need to know how much room and how much time you have to make the shot. The wrist shot's the most commonly used shot in hockey, and it's best when you're closer to the net. You can be accurate, and you can have control over where you shoot the puck. Players can take a wrist shot from a forehand glide position. This allows them to steady their body, get good balance, reduce their speed, and look up at the goaltender. From this position, you can read what spots of the net the goaltender isn't covering, and your level of control is higher, and the speed of release is much quicker. With the power generated with the slap shot, you can score long-range goals. Slap shots provide much more power than a wrist shot, but you will sacrifice some accuracy. Slap shot obviously takes longer to perform because you have a bigger windup, so you need more time and space to execute the shot. The windup also indicates to the other players and the goaltender that you are going to shoot it. It makes it easier for the defending team to read and react to the angle you're going to release the puck from, and allows the goalie to get set. The slap shot's the most effective when you're further away from the net and you have enough time to get the shot off. Net battles occur when an attacking player positions himself in front of the other team's net to screen the goalie, deflect shots, or to find a rebound. The defensive player's job is to move the attacking player out of the way, tie up their stick, or in some cases, get in front of the attacker to block a shot in an attempt to prevent a scoring chance. To initiate a net battle, press and hold the Y button. You can use the right stick to shrug off or push off from either side if you are in a net battle. Tapping left trigger will allow you to spin and get position on the opponent. Pressing A will lift the stick. Use it to get around the opponent and push them to the side as you engage them with your stick. A bank pass is a great tool to play the puck forward and pass defenders to escape the defensive zone or set up an offensive zone opportunity. A bank pass uses the boards to change the pass angle and to get to a teammate whose lane was covered otherwise. To become an accurate passer using this technique, a player needs to practice this from various angles and positions to get a better feel for how the puck will bounce off the board. This skill can be used to pass on the forehand or the backhand, and also use it to pass to yourself when going around another player. Bank passes require great aim and control of power to execute properly. Players often change the angle of the puck in order to make a pass to a teammate. This pass may result in the player moving the puck either backhand to their forehand or vice versa for making the pass. A change of angle can determine a pass getting through or not to your teammate. Dumping the puck into the offensive zone is done for one of two reasons. One, to give your team an opportunity to make a line change. Or two, to place the puck in the offensive zone to give the four checkers an opportunity to go get the puck back or to put pressure on the opposition's defenseman to create a turnover. Dumping the puck works best when the defending team's holding the blue line closely, making it difficult to carry the puck in. 
You've got to catch your teammates in stride when dumping the puck for a better chance of retrieving it. This can be used to give your team time to make a line change or to go on the forecheck when your players don't have the speed to get to the puck first.